In this video, we will learn about the clinical evaluation of an acute flaccid paralysis case. AFP is characterized by sudden onset of weakness and floppiness in any part of the body in a child less than 15 years of age or paralysis in a person of any age in whom polio is suspected. Acute refers to sudden onset and rapid progression of illness. Thus, it refers to floppiness and reduced tone. Paralysis means weakness of the affected part. While plagia refers to severe loss of motor strength, paresis refers to slight loss of motor strength. To avoid missing of polio cases, include all cases having current flaccid paralysis, history of flaccid paralysis in the current illness, and borderline or ambiguous clinical signs. All AFP cases should have onset of paralysis within the last six months from the date of notification. Requirements to conduct clinical examination in an AFP case are Flexible measuring tape, reflex hammer, stethoscope, torch, toys, toffees, biscuits, etc. Now let us begin to learn about the process of an AFP case evaluation. Muscle tone. Muscle tone can be graded into normal, hypotonia or decreased tone and hypotonia or increased tone. Decreased muscle tone is characteristic of an AFP case. Methods to assess muscle tone are Palpation of muscles soft and flabby in hypotonia while stiff feel in hypotonia resistance to and range of passive movements at major joints less or no resistance in hypotonia while higher resistance in hypertonia muscle power muscle power testing provides information on the degree of paralysis of the muscle or muscle group muscle power can be classified into the following grades grade 0 no detectable contraction in muscle Grade 1 – Flicker of contraction in muscle Grade 2 – Active movement with gravity eliminated Grade 3 – Active movement against gravity but no resistance Grade 4 – Active movement against some resistance Grade 5 – Active movement against good resistance How to check power of the muscle? Ask patient to make limb movements at the joint to be tested by using maneuvers specified in the muscle power grading. In infants, observe all the movements being done by the child and compare with other limbs. Reflexes A decrease in reflexes signals lower motor neuron lesion, whereas an increase in reflexes signals upper motor neuron lesion. Biceps reflex Elbow remains semi-flexed at right angle with semi-pronated position of forearm. Place your thumb or index finger of left hand over the tendon of biceps muscle just above the antecubital fossa and tap it with a reflex hammer. Observe the flexion at elbow and visible contraction of biceps muscle. Triceps reflex The subject's elbow is flexed over chest and examiner should support the subject's hand at the elbow. Then strike over the triceps tendon just above the olecranon process and look for extension of elbow and visible contraction of triceps muscle. Supinator or brachioradialis reflex. Flex the elbow of the subject and rest the forearm in semi-pronated position, relaxing on the examiner's hand. Strike at the styloid process of radius at lower and outer end of forearm. Look for the flexion of the elbow and pronation of the forearm with visible contraction of brachioradialis muscle. Knee reflex. For checking knee jerk in supine position, the examiner will have to place his or her forearm underneath the subject's semi-flexed knee to raise the knee above the surface. Then strike just below the patella and observe sudden extension of the knee with the contraction of the quadriceps muscle. Alternative method The subject sits at the edge of the table or bed with the legs hanging free. After tapping the patella tendon, Look for the contraction of quadriceps muscle and extension of the leg and knee. Ankle reflex. Rotate the leg externally and flex the knee slightly to place the foot over leg. The tapping of tendo Achilles is followed by plantar flexion, which is appreciated by the left hand placed under the sole. There is visible contraction of gastrocnemius muscle. Plantar reflex. Ask the subject to lie down on the bed. With one hand, grasp the leg just above the ankle joint and the other hand with the help of the semi-sharp object like thumbnail or key or pointed end of reflex hammer. 
Gently scratch the outer edge of the sole of the foot from the heel towards the little toe and then medially across the metatarsal towards the ball of the great toe. The flexor plantar response is characterized by the inversion and dorsiflexion of the ankle with flexion of all the toes at metatarsal joint. This is normally present in healthy subjects. Extensor plantar response is characterized by dorsiflexion of the great toe, fanning and extension of other four toes with dorsiflexion of ankle. It is found in the patients with upper motor neuron lesion. It is normally seen in children under the age of two years and in deep sleep. Limb circumference measurement is an important clinical examination to assess the muscle wasting due to paralysis and is done at four points. Mid-arm circumference Measure the distance between acromion process of the shoulder to olecranon process at elbow. Put a mark midway between both the points on the arm and measure the circumference. Mid-forearm circumference Measure the distance between the olecranon process at elbow to pisiform bone of wrist joint. Put a mark midway between both the points on the forearm and measure the circumference. Mid-thigh circumference Measure the distance between anterior superior iliac spine of hip bone to medial condyle of femur. Put a mark midway between both the points on the thigh and measure the circumference. Mid-calf circumference Measure the distance between the medial condyle of femur to medial malleolus at ankle. Put a mark midway between both the points on the leg and measure the circumference. All the measurements must be taken by a flexible measuring tape in centimeters while using the overlapping technique. Cranial nerve examination Third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves that is oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve and abducens nerve. Watch for eye movements in all the directions, any squint, drooping of eyelid, pupillary and accommodation reflexes. Seventh cranial nerve. Look for facial asymmetry especially in crying child or on smiling child. Lower motor neuron type of facial paralysis involves both the upper and lower part of face on the affected side and consists of loss of forehead wrinkling, incomplete closure of eye, reduced prominence of nasolabial fold, deviation of angle of mouth to healthy side, drooling of saliva on affected side, inability to blow air or whistle from affected side. Ask the subject to whistle, blow, close eyes tightly and show teeth for eliciting these signs. Glossopharyngeal and vagus cranial nerve. The affected child may have dysphagia, nasal regurgitation, nasal twang, loss of swallowing, or sucking reflex, loss of gag or pharyngeal reflex, loss of movement of palate when saying ah or crying. 11th cranial nerve or spinal accessory. Check for any inability to shrug the shoulders against resistance and weakness in rotation of chin to opposite side. Bulbar paralysis. It manifests as any weakness of muscles supplied by 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th cranial nerves. Clinical manifestations are drooling of saliva, pooling of secretion, dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing, nasal regurgitation, dysarthria or slurred speech, nasal twang, respiratory and vasomotor centers may get involved. Sensory system It can be evaluated by looking for sensation for touch and pain. Gait Gait of the child should be closely observed to identify any abnormalities and must be captured in a short 1-2 to two minute video. Circumduction, spastic or hemiplegic gait, high stepping gait, ataxic gait, staggering gait or drunken gait, waddling gait, limping gait, scissoring gait, Gova sign. The case should be asked to squat on the floor and then asked to stand up without any external support. Rising from the floor is difficult and hands are used 
to climb over self known as positive goa sign goa sign is a feature of myopathy and muscular dystrophy cerebellar function it is tested by watching for broad based or drunken gait heel knee test tandem walking finger nose test or past pointing intention tremors and nystagmus a good clinical and neurological examination is essential for making accurate diagnosis of an afp case